Welcome, Molly. Thanks so much for joining me here today. Hi, Sally. Thanks for uh, having me. So I'm really looking forward to this segment, partially because, I mean, just so everybody on the show knows, you are responsible for finding clients for me. You're not the only one, but you are one. You are a very important member of that team. So, so yeah, what are, um, I mean, not that you need to tell me everything that you tell the clients, but like, I'd love to hear your overview of, of why people, I mean, I have my own reasons from my point of view. Um, why I'm why I feel like I am quite helpful with students, but really curious about your perspective. Like, what are some reasons why colleges might want to hire someone to help with the college process for their student? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so I'm the director of client services here at Bright Horizons College mm -hmm. Coach. So what that means is I'm speaking to thousands of families from around the country every year that are interested in hiring an independent college admissions expert to work with their student. Um, you know, and the reasons why people reach out in the first place really can vary. I think it tends to fall in a few different buckets. The, you know, maybe the primary being we're feeling overwhelmed, stressed. This process is changing rapidly. Um, you know, we don't know what to believe, what to do next. Um, that might be because they're getting very little support from their high school. Um, I know you and I recently chatted mm -hmm. about the ratio in mm -hmm. the like the uh, ratio in the United States of students to counselors in high schools, and that's around 250 students for every counselor. Mm -hmm. So that's not right. And there, those counselors, their main set of responsibilities is often not college admission support. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, yeah, that in and of itself can be the pr one of the primary reasons, just mm -hmm. really needing support. Um, oftentimes it's also my student is high achieving, has some high goals. We know that can be really, really challenging at that most selective level. So we need, we know that my child needs to be strategic in making choices with their courses and extracurriculars. So really getting an expert's guidance and input on those decisions can be really key. Yeah, I want to actually go back, um, if that's okay, to the first point. Um, I was actually, as well as working in college admissions, I was a high school counselor, and my caseload was 40 students. And my really, my only duty was college counseling. I also ran AP exams, um, but that was that was it. That was my duty. And I was busy. I was a busy, busy person. I was working more than full time. And so I just want to kind of highlight like 250 counselors, I mean, or 250 students for a counselor. And some districts, it's 500. I remember when I worked at the University of Chicago from certain districts in California, we wouldn't get a letter of recommendation. We just get a, like, we just get a stamp where we ask for a letter saying like, our caseload is too big. We don't write letters. And I just thought, it's just heartbreaking for that student, but also I don't blame the district. There's not enough funding. So I just want to put out my little editorial. I know that's not, like the, but right. uh, I just want to highlight that. I think that that's really tragic. So, um, but yeah, luckily we are there. We are happy to give some expert college advice. So what are, what kinds of advice do people want? Like, like, obviously if it's a more selective college, I mean, if you're in California and you're applying to kind of one of the Cal States, you probably don't need us as much, but like if you're going for UC Berkeley, if you're going for Stanford, if you're out, if you're applying to University of Michigan or whatever it might be, you know, that, that can make a difference. Right, well, right now what I'm hearing from seniors, families that are coming to us with a senior getting ready to apply, that might be, we're needing help with finalizing the college list. Mm -hmm. And we have some really great fit uh, reach schools maybe our best, a few best fit, no problems, but we need help finding something in between. Um, and my students kind of, I was feeling really behind in the writing process, doesn't really mm -hmm. know where to start, needs an expert to help, you know, brainstorm ideas, what to, what to highlight in their personal statement and some editing guidance as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For families of students that are starting earlier in the process with us, maybe ninth, 10th grade, then it is more focused on extracurricular support. You know, students are so busy, parents are so busy. You know, what are the things that my child could or should be doing to really maximize their chances of admission, but also for them to really explore their, their interests and mm -hmm. focus their time? 
Yeah. I want to say, though, too, that I think curricular choices are important as well. I worked with a student who luckily signed up with me in his junior year. He wanted to be an engineer and he hadn't taken physics. And I said, you have to take physics next year. That is not an option. That is not like you have to take physics. And he's like, well, I don't know. I was, And I'm like, do you want to be an engineer? If so, you must take physics. And if they hadn't talked to me, they wouldn't have known that. Yeah. So, so I always so, highlight that too. And I think families don't realize the importance of mm -hmm. that. Um, they're like, no, we, we have that set. You know, my, my high school says, this is what I need to do. And I often say that might be great for most students in the high school, often for your state programs. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at privates or publics out of state, sometimes that our guidance might be actually again, you know, kind of against mm -hmm. what, what, what the school counselor is saying. So mm -hmm. it really does depend on what the student's goals mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm glad you highlighted that because it's yeah. always something I stress. Yeah. I'll highlight one other thing. I've run into a lot of top students in Texas who stopped taking language after their second year. And I'm like, look, if you want a Texas school, that's fine. But if you want Stanford, you you're going to hurt yourself. Right. You know, and sometimes they don't get to me in time for me to be able to tell them that. So these things can be important. And yeah, the counselors are doing the best job they can, but they're thinking about UT Austin. They're not thinking about some of these other schools. So, um, all right. What else? What else do people want help with? Well, one thing I hear fairly often and maybe even increasingly so is we want an expert to help us to reduce the stress in our family relationship, mm -hmm. you know, both for the student and for the family relationship. Um, you know, my child just won't listen to me, you know, so <laughs> having a third party to help with those aspects. And then, you know, we ask our families as they wrap up working with us, what aspects they found most valuable. And in addition to the essay support and the expert guidance, stress reduction is always in like the top three. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say too that I think for the students who actually listen to me and do the work I assign them, which is an important caveat, their stress is always lower and they always yes. acknowledge it. And they'll, I worked with one student who came from a fairly like a, a rural high school that wasn't very, the counseling office was not well developed. It was all geared towards a pretty easy, like the community college really. And so she said that because of my help to her, she was the one helping her friends. So and great. I had taken down her stress so much to the point where she was almost done. Her parents were not worried at all. And then she just was started helping her friends with things. And she said, you know, that was, and I, I was like moved yeah. by that actually, you know? Yeah, and I love hearing the feedback of, like, I really feel so much more confident in what mm -hmm. I'm putting forward, confident in, in my choices. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing better than hearing that at, at the very end of the process. Um, you know, that it's really been, the student feels like their process has been true to who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's not always something that families are thinking about when they're mm -hmm. looking to hire someone, but always something they're so grateful for at the very end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When their kid ends up at the right place. Right. One of my favorite compliments too, is when they say, when they go to a college, sometimes they'll go to a college and they'll say, I hadn't even heard of this college until you told me about it. And it's the perfect place for me. And that is right. actually a really favorite compliment as well. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. That yeah. list building, helping identify, and even in the early stages, providing that framework around for the student to think about what are my wants and needs? You know, mm -hmm. what will make me happy? What will help me thrive? And because we've all worked on college campuses, you know, we can help students think about the aspects of the college search process that they should really hone in on, maybe things they may not be thinking about. Um, so those are all really valuable yeah. parts of working with a counselor. Yeah, I worked with one student who unfortunately only came to me in her senior year once her list was set and her parents were very clear that they didn't want me to work on her list. At the end of the process, she had been admitted to some very, very good schools. I want to be clear. I'm not going to say their name because I don't want to make it sound like I'm casting aspersions. But at the end of the process, she realized she would have preferred a smaller school. And it was too late. So we had to figure out like she had an option of an honors college. And I thought, well, this might be your best option. It was a very good honors college. I said, this will give you. But I just thought if they just come to me a few months earlier, 
Right. I would have Focusing found a little less uh, on yeah. always on name, but yeah, yeah, right. what are, where am I going to thrive? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was, I just, my heart broke for her because I couldn't fix that. I mean, I could just help her make the best of what her options were at that point. And again, wonderful options, but for a different student, actually. Right. Yeah. And then I know, I think people probably ask about this a lot. I know that people, when they hear what I do, and I just, I want to address this particular myth because it sticks in my craw a little bit because I work very hard to be ethical. They say, well, you write their essays for them. And I'm like, no, I do not. <laughs> so no. how do you talk to people right. about that? And that is a big point where, where we often discuss at, at length, you know, what our process is for helping students write. Um, you know, first it is, let's help you brainstorm what aspects of who you are, what's important to you, your values, mm -hmm. um, you know, that the admissions officers may not see in the other aspects of your application, you know, knowing that often this is a holistic review process. So first brainstorming, really figuring out the topic. I think that is so key. Again, having a former admissions officer really be able to help a student think about what they're writing about. Um, and then, you know, being really careful through the editing process, not to change a student's voice or alter mm -hmm. that, but to help guide them to really craft their very best work. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't sound like a 40 year old adult, right? It should sound like uh, a high school senior, mm -hmm. sound and feel like that, right? So mm -hmm. um, I know that as a former admissions officer myself, coming on as part of the Bright Horizons college coach team, our approach, the ethical approach and how we approach the writing process in particular, I was very in line with um, and really appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For me too. I would not have the longevity here that I've had if, if we didn't focus on that. And I just want to say too, not only do I not write the essay for the student, but I've pushed back when sometimes parents have become a little heavy handed um, one of my favorite stories is a student who, she was a wonderful young woman. She got into a perfect college for her. It was great. And, but she ended up quoting, she, she wrote an essay. She wasn't the best writer. She loved math and science more, which was fine. Um, but she was writing something fairly serviceable. Then she comes back with a draft that is quoting Proust, who's like a fair, somewhat obscure Belgian author. I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but a lot of people are like, who the hell is that? Excuse <laughs> my language. And um, I said, this does not sound like you. And she looks at me and she goes, yeah, my dad wrote it. And I was like, okay, we're going to go back to the last draft because nobody's going to believe that you wrote this. <laughs> right. Red <laughs> like, flag. As I'm a like, former admissions <laughs> officer. Yeah. Those stand flag. out. Those stand out. Exactly. Yes. The other thing too, that I see that was kind of especially egregious, but well-meaning parents will kind of clean up the language and it ends up sounding like a work memo. And I'm like, no, the informal voice is good. These are high school students. They're allowed to be high school students. Yes, it needs to be grammatical, but it doesn't need to be stiff. Let's keep their personality in it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those are the most memorable essays, right? Where mm -hmm. you really can hear and get a sense of what the student's voice is. So I think that can be a big mistake to overly polish, overly edit out that authenticity. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the pieces of advice I give students and my hope is that I can empower them this way is to carefully choose who they're going to show the essay to yes. and really limit it. More is not actually better. And that's often surprising to students. And then I usually follow it up by telling them, look, I've probably read at this point 60,000. Like I'm not exaggerating. I think 60,000 yeah. college admission essays between my time and admissions and doing this. So I'm the one who's going to know how these things resonate more than your parent or even an English teacher and everybody at College Coach. I'm not saying this to brag about me, but these are who you recommend to uh, with students who call you. So exactly. Right. I think mm -hmm. that's great. Great advice and great to give a student permission to mm -hmm. create those boundaries, right, for their for their own writing process and for their mental health, really. Mm hmm. Yeah. Can I make one last plug? It'll be in, in, in like sort of indirectly towards us. One of the things that concerns me when I talk to people about whether they want to hire me or, or not, or one of a, you know, one of my colleagues is I say, you know, there are other good people out there. I'm very proud of all my colleagues. I think we're great, but there certainly are other good people, but make sure you hire someone who actually worked in college admissions. 
Someone who yes. just went to a highly selective college does not actually, they think they have insight into how the process works, but they don't. So definitely work someone who's been in college admissions. Right. And I think the other big thing is, do you get the choice of who you're working with? And is mm-hmm. that going to be a good fit, right? You could have the most amazing teacher with the best resume, but if you don't really connect with their learning style, mm-hmm not going to be great, right? So same with a college counselor. Is it going to be a great fit? Have a nice synergy. The experience is number one, but number two, the fit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've had people who switched away from me to a colleague and had that same colleague lose someone to me because I just have a different style and that's all fine. So, um, all right. Any last words, anything else that you want to, um, highlight? I think if anyone has questions about what it would be like to work with us, they can visit our website, which is getintocollege.com. And I'd love to set up a call and we can learn more about your child and, and explore next steps. All right. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Molly. Thanks for having me. All right. So uh, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will be addressing FAFSA simplification. <laughs> 